And now we are ready to go, go with go, go. The big announcement this week was obviously the move into Canada. Uh, you built out uh, 5G into the US. Yep. Uh, it's a major market, but those Canadian guys, they're moving around too. So, uh, I mean, where do you go next? Was, uh, you know, world domination has to be right around the corner. Well, we just announced it, and we'll, we'll talk about it next after we talk about that a little bit. <laughs> yeah. So talk about Canada, because the, the build out on that's gotta be a little bit more challenging than here in the US. It, it does have its unique challenges, but at, at the end of the day, um, it, it's, um, it's an extension of what we've done in the United States. I mean, it, it's unique in, in Canada because it has uh, the, the topography, uh, the time of season that we can deploy, is, is limited compared to the, the lower 48s, but then there are also some, some significant challenges, what we refer to as sac acquisition site, or site acquisition, excuse me, <laughs> where we have to go and find, we do an RF map of the region, what, what would the, the best allocation of towers for coverage be? And, uh, and then what, what happens is we find out that the best location is on top of a mountain where there's nothing. Yeah. And so we have to figure out how to, how to build a tower there. And you got to go through city permits and structural. And, and who owns the mountain? And who owns the mountain? <laughs> so the federal and the state and the local authorities. So we'll, this year we'll be doing all of the site acquisition and we'll actually start to deploy the network. And because of the, uh, the, 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 the weather up there, we'll have to stop and start again next year and finish it out next year. But, you know, the Canadian coverage for us is extremely important for our customers because uh, not only is it a, a valuable asset for the business aviation and general aviation customers in Canada, but it's also a significant flight route from New York to Seattle. Or when people are going towards Asia, um, you know, having that coverage, air to ground coverage, all the way through Alaska or Canada and Alaska increases their coverage uh, for about another hour, hour and a half. And so it's a significant, very important thing for our customers. So we're really glad to start uh, uh, starting that project and finishing it next year. And as I understand that too, that extends up into Alaska eventually, correct? Oh, correct. Our current network does cover Alaska as well. Okay. Uh, and what we're doing right now is, when I say our current network, so we, we basically Connects have the dots. Two, two networks overlapping each other. Okay. We have, we have our, our, our licensed network or our, our traditional network that most people know of. Um, and that is all over the United States and in Canada. And our 5G network overlays on the United States and now it's going to uh, cover the Canadian so that, so that you can have 5G coverage uh, over the entire air to ground network, not just the United Lower 48. Well, that's aggressive. Yeah. And then on top of that, in the not too distant future, they're going to be able to go from there to satellite anyway. And, there you go. And again, and that's, our, that's our next. Yeah, there we go. That's our next. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Holy smoke. <laughs> I, you know, I've watched different iterations of your corporate strategies over the years between airline and the BizHab community, and of course, uh, from BizHab you can go anywhere, especially with this community, and all of a sudden, I, you know, and so forth, and I'm just sitting there going, okay, you know, until I got experienced in the airplane, it was kind of fun, but okay, let me experiment now, and he just looked at me and goes, don't bother me, I'm working. And, I mean, the capabilities then were phenomenal, but the capabilities to come make the airplane as expensive and as difficult it is to maintain these things and do all this and do all that, they become so much more valuable. You magnify the proposition. Uh, pretty, so, pretty cool stuff, but 5G? I mean, you're talking up to 75, 80 MIPS? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a, a normal experience uh, will be about 25 megabits per second, but uh, you know, it'll be peaks in the 75 to 85 uh, megabits per second. But you know, it, it's really, you can't, have a successful company and strategy and satisfy your customers if you're not always, if you're not keeping up with them or staying ahead of them. Yeah. And that's really our strategy has always been to continue to invest in, in, in our connectivity solutions, whether it's air to ground or satellite. And, and, and as long as we continue to do that and support it in a way that, that aviation customers, flight departments and owners uh, satisfy their needs both operationally and, and from a business standpoint, then I think we'll continue to grow and be a successful company. And I don't see that, that's part of our culture, part of our DNA, you know. Yeah. So global broadband is going to change um, the landscape uh, significantly. I mean, what GoGo did to business aviation 15 years ago, 12 years ago, was we made connectivity available to everybody in business aviation. 
uh, that flies in North America. What our global broadband solution is going to do is do the exact same revolutionary offering, but around the rest of the world. So the CJ operators in Geneva or, or in, in Kenya or in Bogota will have access to an affordable, high-speed internet solution that gives them the ability to run their business and manage their business when they're flying or on the ground. The other part of the equation, though, that I thought was particularly uh, laudable was the fact that the hardware side of the business, what we had to actually stuff in an airplane and you know, find a shop that could deal with it, this, that, and the other, turned out to be not that onerous a task. We've put a lot of time and effort, and uh, we, there was, we try to be a very disruptive company, and not just in technology. I love that word. You like that? <laughs> well, I was part of the XPRIZE community and worked with Peter Diamandis, whose famous uh -huh. phrase was, That's... disruption is not a dirty word. No, no, disruption is, is, is the basis of survival. Yes. It's the mortar of success. And, and the reality and it is- it really ticks off the competition. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know, it, it, the reality is, is that, is that um, you, you have to continue to be disruptive, not just in how you bring technology to the market, but how you service the customer. And, and one of the things that we've done is we've made connectivity not just uh, easier to install, um, we, we saw this paradigm in our industry where every time there was a new connectivity solution, you had to rip out the old system and put in a new one. And we thought, that's just too disruptive. It's too cost, it costs too much. So we designed the advanced platform strategy so that it could be a building block and you can take it in different directions. I'll, I'll give you an example. So if you have a, a, an L3 or, or, or an L5 uh, installed in your aircraft, you can install, depending on where you operate, a global broadband solution or a 5G solution at a very small incremental cost, much less than putting an L5 or an L3 in, because you're just adding to it. And some of the features and functions that we have, you don't even have to have hardware. So we've really, we really want to make our business model around servicing the customer, not around ripping out and reinstalling systems in the aircraft. So to that, we pay a lot of attention to how to do it in a, in a, in a very cost-effective way and leverage every dollar invested by a flight department. What kind of input are you getting from customer base right now? The one thing that's fascinating about the avionics industry is that in the long run, you will learn more from your customers than you ever imagined. Uh, sometimes much to your chagrin, but at the same time, education is hard. Um, what are you learning right now, and how is that guiding your strategy? Well, I'll tell you, you mentioned the, the segment a little while ago about the possibility of, of uh, uh, going into the smaller aircraft that traditionally haven't had a, a, a connectivity solution. A couple years ago, uh, when uh, Cirrus launched their Vision Jet, their Vision Jet 2, I believe, uh, GoGo is an option on that. It has a tremendously high take rate. Now it's a personal jet, much yeah. smaller. And uh, we also have a, a tremendous uh, uh, customer base with the, the CJP group. Oh yeah. And you know, citation the, guys love you. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I really hadn't interacted with that customer base so much. We had more par 91 corporate flight department. Um, but this group of individuals would have what's unique about them is that these owner operator crowd, uh, they fly an aircraft and they own an aircraft because they love aviation. Bingo. But you put on top of that, they are they're entrepreneurs, innovators, and disruptors in their own right, whether they have a software company, and mobile whether they're to the managing. Degree. Correct, and they understand. And I have enjoyed working with that group more than, than I have enjoyed with working with anybody in a long time. And I'll tell you why. Because they're party animals first. Well, <laughs> yes, they, they like to party, that's true. <laughs> but what, what impresses me is that there's one, one particular individual I'm thinking about manages a ton of, you know, he owns a ton of restaurants. Okay. And uh, he is the type of individual that every time he sees something in aviation doesn't make sense, he goes out and looks to see if there's a solution. And if he doesn't find a solution that he feels is adequate and cost affordable, you know what he does? He, he does it himself. Okay. And because of that, he has successfully started, developed, and sold two aviation companies, and it's not his business. That's not his core <laughs> business. And he's a customer, and I'll have him call me up and say, Sergio, I was just thinking, you know, if GoGo did this, this, and that, you guys would knock it out of the park. And, and I, I'm always amazed how this individual is responsible for thousands of employees, however big his personal net worth is, 
and he is so passionate about aviation and the GoGo products, and because that he actually has time to think about it from from a business standpoint. So I'm I'm really enjoying this this new phase of GoGo expansion into I would say the more the 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 heavy personal uh, jets and or the the, the heavy turboprops and the and the personal and these jets. These guys are these guys and girls are flying all the time. I mean they're just. I was uh, talking to Philippe uh, de Segovia from uh, TBM, and some of the utiliz utilizations they're getting on early, I mean, the latest version, early utilizations, these people are logging hours. I mean, they, they might as well just put a mattress in the back and live in the bloody things. It's amazing how, many, how much time they're spending in the air. You know, I'll give you a, a little quote. This one individual, um, this other individual, uh, I was talking to him at the, at the uh, eBay show in Geneva last year, and he said to me, do you know why I own an airplane? I go, no, sir, I don't know why you own an airplane. He goes, the same reason why I have GoGo on it. And I'm like, okay, I was interested. And he goes, when I get home, I want to be with my family. He goes, if I had to fly commercially all the places around the United States that I do to, to do my business, and then I went home to finish my emails and finish working, he goes, yeah. I would never have any time. He goes, no. So having an aircraft and having GoGo on my aircraft, give me the freedom and the ability to spend time with my family that I would not otherwise have. He goes, that's why I wow. want your product to succeed because it makes me a better father and a better husband. Now, I, I was, I was so blown away by that. basically, GoGo is marriage counseling. On a, okay. <laughs> or keeps it from happening, I hope. Well, there you go. <laughs> Works for me. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a really good excuse to, uh, for the web. Oh, sweetie, we really must have uh, this installation <laughs> in the airplane and, oh yeah, bigger airplane too because it's just good for the marriage. It's good for the marriage. I don't think I'm going to get that one past my <laughs> wife, but I can try. Yeah. Holy smokes. They're just amazing stuff. So let's talk a little bit about schedules coming up. Sure. Uh, how, will, how will Canada go? What is happening with the current 5G deployment here in the U.S.? And mm -hmm. also, especially on the hardware side, where are we at with everything? So uh, the 5G hardware, both the antenna and the, uh, the LRU, the box, it, it, those have already been SDC'd and PMA'd. We have started shipping the antennas and the provisional kits. We're not shipping the LRU yet, right? Because uh, uh, Samsung, who's the manufacturer of the 5G chipset, had a manufacturing issue, and they won't get us that chip until the middle of this year. At which point, then we'll go ahead and do a minor STC, do some some yeah. uh, some uh, qual qual testing, and then and the, then amend the STC, and then start shipping our 5G hardware package um, and turn on the service the second half of this year. Okay. Um, somewhere in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the, so in the November November October uh, time frame. Ooh. So that's the five G. MBAA. MBAA. You know, it kind of happens to, to, to work out that way. Great so we're, we're 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 uh, really excited about that. Um, the five G network expansion into Canada, like I said, is happening this year. We'll build out some towers, and then we'll finish building out by the end Kick of next year. Kick out a few polar bears. Probably not. We're going to be really friendly to the polar bears and, <laughs> and to the whatever other animals that we have to be careful of out yeah, there. Really? But, but, but yeah. Um, so that's that. But from a schedule standpoint, um, something that, that uh, a lot of people aren't aware of that we're really getting the message out is that GoGo, you know, once we finished our 5G development, um, we really focused our attention, and it's been part of our long term uh, plan to take the original air-to-ground network we had and do a technology refresh. Okay. And so over the next couple of years, actually next three years, we are going to deploy an entire new network, um, which is, is, is basically refreshing the technology. If you think about it, you know, those, those uh, cell sites have been out there for 12 years. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of technology developments and so forth. And so for, for, for customer improvement and speed and all that, we are going to replace the entire air-to-ground network. And then in 2026, and this is the message we're trying to get out, the classic air-to-ground systems that we originally started selling won't work on that network. Okay. So we're in the process right now of go reaching out to every one of our customers. We still have about 3,500 customers that have that, that we call it the classic air-to-ground system on it that we launched originally. None otherwise as the ATG 1000, 2000, 4000, and 5000. And, and we are offering them very, very uh, aggressive rebates to upgrade to the Avance L3 or to the Avance L5 because that technology will in fact work on the, the newer technology. Not only okay. will it work, like an L3, like a, a classic uh, 
uh, an ATG 5000, somebody who puts a, an L3 in their aircraft is going to get a 40% throughput improvement. Okay, that's impressive. Plus, we're going to give them about a $25,000 check to help offset their, uh, the, the, the cost of their installation. And when I mean check, I'm not talking about a credit towards their services. I'm talking about when they activate the system, we're going to write them a check and mail them a $25,000 check if they install an L3. If they install an L5, wow. okay. we're going to give them a, a, a $25,000, or excuse me, a $50,000 check. And if they sign up for provisions for an L5 and, and 5G, it's going to be a hundred thousand dollar check. Well, if any of those get misplaced and you need a place to send one, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my address before you leave. Just so in we're, case. So we're trying to get the notice out to all of the. Oh all, man. You know, we're talking to all of our dealers, and we're giving our dealers an extra incentive to upgrade those customers. We don't want to leave any customer behind. That you know, the, one of the things that comes up out of this, the amount of communications, the amount of work you must do to be able to keep your customer base up to speed both on what you're doing, how to get the most out of what you have and where you're going, mm -hmm. that must be an intense job. You know, it, it is, but it's actually not that difficult when we look at the GoGo -Go team. I mean, we have a phenomenal team. Um, Good people. It, it, the, I, I, what I like, the, you know, the way I describe it is that I would be friends, if these guys were our, my neighbor, I'd be their friend. They're, they're, I really, really enjoy the people I work with. That's, that's how so, I built a company. And, I'll, and, I'll, and I'm gonna tell you, it's not, it's very special at GoGo, -Go, but it's also part of our business aviation industry. You know, I, I've been in this industry about 30 some odd years now, and um, I've been with GoGo -Go for about 15. But I have to say, the people in this convention center, for the most part, are family, yep. dedicated, passionate people yep. that are just, they're just, if they were your neighbor, you would go have a beer with them and, and, yep. and, and chit chat and talk about fishing. They're all drinking them. the same Kool Aid. <laughs> We're passionate about what we do, so it, you know the only problem with our industry right now is there's not enough of us. We need young people to get involved in this industry. And that's you know it's been an interesting part of each conversation today about training the people you're looking for, especially post pandemic and everything else. That uh, finding the kind of folks that can take into the future right now is probably job one for many of these companies. Yeah, and it's getting tougher by the day because one is the training. Two is the attitude that you're trying to bring in from the kind of people you want to hire and keep with you. And then finally, folks that could grow with you. Yeah. Because retraining somebody two or three years down the line is a real waste of time yeah. and resources. So tough, tough job. Our internship program has been very successful. We've been able to compete with I'm, you know, Fortune 100 companies mm -hmm. um, in our area. And you know, we, we, we have an internship program um, with the School of Mines, with UC Boulder, and now we've expanded to even other, uh, other universities outside of, of Colorado. And we bring in interns, and it's been a very successful internship program. And we've been able to, once these individuals graduate, they're getting offers from Fortune 100 companies, and they're choosing to come back to GoGo. -Go. You know why? Because, not just because of the culture, mm -hmm. but because we're a small entrepreneur company, when we hire somebody, we don't give them a widget. We give them a project, okay. and that is extremely uh, gratifying for an engineer or a marketing person to say, you, no, no, you got to figure out how to do this. We don't know how to do it. you got to figure There's it out. There's a sense of ownership in that. And what we have found is that we have brought in a tremendous amount of very high talented people as interns that come back to work for Google later, and it has been a really blessing for both of us. So. Good for you. That's, a, that's, yeah. that's an investment that works. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Well, Sergio, I got to tell you that it's always fun to talk to you folks. It's always fun to find out what's going on. I get a hold of Dave, okay, what's next for the next show? And um, it's always one of those situations where, oh, cool, okay. Didn't know what was going there, but yay. Yay. But you got to keep us up to date on everything, and especially between now and Oshkosh and uh, MBAA, I think is going to be an incredible time for GoGo, -Go. and it'll be fun to watch. I mean, I'll be the guy with the popcorn and the cheap seats. <laughs> Just go for it, guys. <laughs> Who knows? You might get one of those refund checks. <laughs> or rebate it's checks. A, it's going to be a little checks. while yet. <laughs> i got to work my way up from Twin Comanches or something similar. Hey, up to might, something that's might, you might find something there pretty soon. <laughs> oh, man. I, I can only hope because the, some of the most fun traveling with Tracy, Tracy and the CJ, uh, outside of the fact it was just a lovely airplane to fly, and I really enjoyed it, um, was just, you know, pulling out the phone, grabbing this and that. Hey, Masako will be back, you know, about 4.30, this, that, and the other, or 
checking ahead or know where your rental car is or all the other things that, you know, never get settled until you're on the ground are now getting settled halfway there. Then all they can sudden, go have dinner. It's time at that yeah. point to turn yeah. on, you know, Howard Stern and listen to what craziness <laughs> is going on next. So how do, you, how do you beat that? That's life. We're getting business done. We're entertaining ourselves. We're staying informed and we're keeping our lives going. So b before we end this, I want to thank you, Jim. I mean, this, you've been doing this now for 15 years, I believe, right? 15 years for uh, live, uh, of course, Aero News, believe it or not, yeah. 26 last November. But the reality is that, that you know, you really do help uh, keep our, our, our dealers informed. It's impossible to go out and talk to everybody. We're here to support our dealers who've made us successful. They're the ones who represent our products to the end customers. They're the ones who, who do the installations, certify it, promote us, and you're a, a, a way for us to communicate with all of them, to keep them informed. And so thank you very much well, for that. We really enjoyed it. It was either that or get a real job, and you know that, oh, <laughs> that's just not going to happen. I mean, who would hire this guy anyway? But then again, uh, I so enjoy this part of the industry. I mean, I, I love every aspect of it, and I've worked in every aspect of aviation. Uh, I mean, everything from real basic GA all the way up to rocket stuff with XPRIZE and this, that, and the other. And it's always been fascinating, but uh, what's happening in avionics drives oh. aviation. Yeah. Uh, you know, for the longest time, nothing changed with engines, not much changed with airframes, but avionics, every aspect of this, whether it be displays or communications or connectivity, drove aviation forward. Absolutely. And as we drive aviation forward, we drive business, we drive the world. And they should be damn thankful to us all, don't you think? I, I agree with you 100%. All righty. Sergio, we can't thank you enough uh, for presenting the latest and greatest from GoGo. -Go. We look forward to hearing, getting postcards from Canada. There you go. You know, I like that. We're going to do that from the marketing standpoint. There you postcards go. from Canada. Yeah, polar bears to the right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and most important, just watching aviation grow as a result. So more power to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Aero News Network's coverage of the 66th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Orlando, Florida, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors.